Back in the late 90s, Chris Tucker seemed like he was positioned to become the next leading man in Hollywood. He represented an era of comedy much like Richard Pryor did in the 70s and Eddie Murphy did in the 80s. Chris Tucker ruled the late 90s. After getting paid $3 million to play Detective James Carter in Rush Hour in 1998, he got a well-deserved raise for the sequel. Tucker was reportedly paid $20 million for Rush Hour 2, and he received $25 million and a percentage of the box office gross for Rush Hour 3. Earning over $20 million a movie is an accomplishment very few actors can claim. As a result, Tucker became the highest paid actor in Hollywood. When you hold that title, a ton of movie scripts come your way. However, the amount of scripts that Tucker was offered doesn't match up with the amount of films he actually appeared in. Since the year 2000, Tucker was only seen in four films, two of them being a part of the Rush Hour franchise. How does Tucker go from being one of the most bankable stars in Hollywood to rarely being seen at all? Here's why Chris Tucker disappeared from Hollywood. Chris Tucker made his stand-up debut on Def Comedy Jam in 1992 and had one of the most memorable sets. The electrifying set catapulted Tucker into stardom as he was cast in small roles like The Meteor Man and House Party 3. That same year, Tucker tried his hand at drama in the film Dead Presidents. 1997 would be the year Chris Tucker would make an even bigger impact in the industry because he would go on to release three films, Money Talks, The Fifth Element, and a small role in Jackie Brown. The year after that, Tucker would reunite with Brett Ratner, the director of Money Talks for Rush Hour, arguably his most recognizable role globally. Rush Hour was a huge hit for audiences, grossing over $244 million worldwide. And after the success of Rush Hour, Tucker would earn $20 million and $25 million for his respective sequels. Now, the highest paid actor in Hollywood, Tucker was able to be more selective with his next projects which served as one of the reasons his fans started seeing him less. It's been reported that Chris Tucker became a born-again Christian a few years later after filming Friday. This change would ultimately be another reason why he declined to return as Smokey in the Friday sequels, as he felt the character wasn't a suitable role model. With his newfound faith, it's understandable that Tucker declined on other roles that he felt didn't align with his spiritual journey. In his process of trying to go to the next level within his comedy. He had a, a, a what you call a, a Christian comedy crash without letting it flow automatically. Once you step in that next level, no one can train you for that. No one can prepare you for that. You're on your own. And what happens when you cross that line into show business, you go into a whole nother world that you cannot predict. And that's what happened to Chris. According to Vulture magazine, Tucker was in talks to have a part in Lethal Weapon 4. The character was Detective Lee Butters. Chris Rock would go on to get the role. A shooting conflict would prevent Tucker from accepting the final offer as filming overlapped between Rush Hour and Lethal Weapon 4. Filming of Lethal Weapon 4 began in January of 1998, but Rush Hour wouldn't end until February of 1998. Tucker was also in the running to appear in Any Given Sunday, which was released in 1999, right in between Rush Hour 1 and 2. Tucker turned down the role of Willie Beeman, and the part eventually went to Jamie Foxx. The film and character were going to highlight drugs, sex, and the fast life surrounding professional sports. Another role Chris was up for, the role of Jamal Walker in Black Knight. Tucker signed on to the project back in 1999, after Rush Hour was released. Along with the director of the original Friday, F. Gary Gray, Tucker was going to earn between $13 million and $15 million for the film. According to the Chicago Tribune, both dropped out due to concerns over the script. Martin Lawrence accepted the role of Jamal Walker after the success of Big Mama's House, and he was reportedly paid $16.5 million. In 2002, there were rumors floating around of Tucker playing Inspector Clouseau, in the reboot of The Pink Panther, after he attended a reading. It's unclear why Tucker didn't appear in the reboot, but The Pink Panther was a family film, so it wasn't because the role was too raunchy. The role eventually went to Steve Martin, who also appeared in the film's sequel in 2009. 2011's Tower Heist was a movie that was in development since as early as 2005, before it was finally released. Eddie Murphy originally conceived the idea as a Black Ocean's Eleven, Starring Chris Rock, Dave Chappelle, Tracy Morgan, Martin Lawrence, and of course, Chris Tucker. The all-star comedians would have played a group of disgruntled employees 
who planned to rob Trump Tower. When the original plan fell through, Ben Stiller, Casey Affleck, and Matthew Broderick were cast. Tucker was also in talks of starring Django Unchained after Will Smith declined the role. According to a 2012 Rolling Stone interview, Tucker said one of the reasons for his absence in Hollywood was that he never found the right role. I'm just really picky. A lot of movies came my way and a lot of them I just wasn't interested in. I was hoping something would come and be out of the box from what I've normally done, but I didn't find it. You'll be around longer if you don't do any and everything for money. Doing cool little roles is more important than starring in a big movie. That's just not that good. The New York Times did a profile on Chris Tucker in 2000, where the president of New Line Cinema Pictures spoke on Chris's selective nature. Oh, they all think Chris is crazy. He won't jump at an open checkbook. And people out here get frustrated. Chris is picky. They get impatient when they can't get him in their lousy scripts. But Chris is not just another actor for hire. He wants to have a long career. Six years passed between Rush Hour 2 and 3, and Chris didn't do any movies in between. After Rush Hour 3, it wasn't another five years before Chris was seen on movie screens again, which was Silver Linings Playbook in 2012. In interviews, Suckers has claimed that he wanted to do more serious films, which explains why his last two movies have gone in that direction. I want to do something that excites me, that is different and fun. Now, in the same interview, Tucker even admitted how working with serious actors benefited his skills on camera. Working with them helped me grow and be a better actor. When speaking to the Daily Beast, Tucker said, The break wasn't planned. It just happened that way. I waited a long time and the right things weren't coming to me. The roles I was offered weren't that challenging, so I started trying to develop a bunch of projects for myself. The projects that Tucker is referring to is a political comedy where Tucker would play the president. The film has been in development as early as 1999, and while doing press for Rush Hour 3 in 2007, Tucker still had plans to produce the film. However, when Obama was elected the first black president in 2008, the project seems to have been scrapped. According to Vulture magazine, as a part of research for the movie, Tucker visited troops in Virginia and consulted with Nelson Mandela, Jesse Jackson, and Bill Clinton, who wanted a cameo. Another project Tucker was developing for himself was under the name Double O Soul. Chris Tucker has been attached to the project since 1998, and Tucker would have played a spy, similar to the Austin Powers franchise. Mariah Carey was set to co-star, but the film never took off. In a 2012 interview with The Guardian, Tucker said, I would love to do more serious movies because people haven't seen me do a lot of that. With the lack of film projects to promote, it seems that this would serve as a reason why Tucker doesn't do much press and is rarely discussed in entertainment news these days. Besides movies, Tucker's has made a return to the stage that got him notoriety. In 2013, he hosted the BET Awards and released a stand-up film, Chris Tucker Live, in 2015 on Netflix. The special will come and go without leaving a distinct impact. Tucker has been secretly popping up in comedy clubs around Atlanta, Georgia, in between theater shows across the country. In 2020, Tucker would announce his world comedy tour, but due to the coronavirus outbreak, it appears that potential dates have been postponed. There have been rumors of a fourth rush hour since the release of Rush Hour 3 back in 2007. However, according to People Magazine back in April 2019, Jackie Chan denied that a fourth film was happening. Chan's management company released a statement that cleared up the false information that Chan would be starring in Rush Hour 4 and The Karate Kid 2. The statement was released days after Tucker posted a picture of him and Chan together, holding up four fingers. Tucker spoke to ABC Audio in October 2019 and said that he and Chan are talking about possibly doing something else. Me and Jackie Chan are talking about doing something new and something different, so we'll see. Hopefully we'll get something going real soon. We're looking at a lot of different projects. We'll see which one comes together first. Whether or not Rush Hour 4 actually does happen, one thing for sure is that fans of Tucker would love to see him back on screens again. No matter the project, Chris Tucker still has the same charismatic persona and the same Michael Jackson moves that originally won over audiences. Tucker's absence continues to go notice as people around the world wonder, will he ever return again?